The method of Brunauer, Emmett, and Teller, commonly known as the BET method, is the most widely used method for estimating surface area. The BET equation and its linear form are shown in this slide, where the standard form describes the isotherm where Q sub A is a function of relative pressure. In the BET equation, Q sub A and Q sub M have the same meaning as in the Langmuir equation. However, relative pressure is employed rather than absolute pressure, and C is a constant associated with the adsorption energy. If the isotherm data conforms to the BET model, plotting the left side of the linear equation as a function of relative pressure, similar to the Langmuir plot, will yield a graph with a linear region. The values of the slope of the linear region and the y-intercept allow the numerical value of the monolayer capacity to be determined as well as the C value. The specific surface area of a solid is the number of molecules in the monolayer multiplied by the surface area occupied by one molecule at the analysis temperature, divided by the sample mass. It is calculated as follows. The monolayer capacity, Q sub M, expressed in moles as determined by BET or Langmuir is multiplied by Avogadro's number, or 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd molecules per mole, to yield the number of molecules required to completely cover the surface. This number is multiplied by the area occupied by each molecule. In the case of nitrogen at liquid nitrogen temperature, this area is 0.162 nanometers squared per molecule. To determine the specific surface area, the total surface area is divided by the mass of the sample used in the test. The next few slides provide examples of determining the BET surface area of different materials. Macroporous silica exhibits a classic type 2 isotherm and BET surface area is approximately 26 meters squared per gram. Silica alumina is a common catalyst support. It is an amorphous material with 10 nanometer pores. This material yields a type 4 isotherm and the surface area is greater than 200 meters squared per gram. This final BET example gives the isotherm and BET surface area of MCM41. MCM41 is a synthetic mesoporous silica with 4 nanometer pores. Its structure is similar to a bundle of drinking straws and it has a BET surface area greater than 900 meters squared per gram. We can use the surface area and pore size results to observe a significant trend. As pore size decreases, surface area increases. This tends to be a good rule of thumb for materials with similar chemical composition. To determine surface area, the relative pressure does not need to exceed a value of 0.4. On the other hand, for the determination of porosity, a full adsorption isotherm and often a desorption isotherm are measured. However, it needs to be realized that any micropores in the sample material are filled long before the monolayer is formed, and therefore at higher pressures, mesopores and macropores are being filled. As the relative pressure continues to increase beyond that required to form a monolayer and fill micropores, Adsorption takes place in multilayers. For materials with mesopores, as pressure is increased, capillary condensation may occur and the mesopores are filled with liquid nitrogen before bulk condensation occurs. The pore size may be estimated using the Kelvin equation, in which gamma and theta are the surface tension and the contact angle of the condensed phase respectively, and VL is the molar volume of the condensed phase. R is the ideal gas constant and T is the analysis temperature. The symbol R sub K represents the radius of curvature of the meniscus of the liquid condensate in the filled pore, which permits calculation of the radius of the pore. Pore filling occurs when the equation is in balance. The only variables in the equation are P and R sub K. Thus, for any value of pressure, and therefore relative pressure, Pores of size R sub K will fill. In addition to capillary condensation, for any unfilled pore, as pressure is building towards its critical filling pressure, the walls of the pore are being coated with layers of adsorbed molecules. 
the thickness of this layer of film is a function of pressure. Thickness at any pressure can be determined using one of several thickness equations derived for specific adsorbent and adsorbate combinations such as the Halsey and Harkins Ura equations. Therefore, the pore being filled is the remaining open core of the actual pore in the sample material. The radius of the pore, R, is the sum of the radius calculated by the Kelvin equation, R sub K, and the thickness, T, of the adsorbed layer on the internal wall of the pore. In other words, R equals R sub K plus T. At the end of the adsorption isotherm, as the relative pressure approaches unity, point D on this slide, all pores up to approximately 200 to 300 nanometers will be completely filled with liquid. The total pore volume of the solid can be determined by taking the cumulative volume from the y-axis of the adsorption isotherm and applying the Gervich rule, which converts the quantity of gas adsorbed into its volume in liquid. For the common case of nitrogen adsorption, the simple equation T times P times V equals phi times q sub a is used to estimate pore volume. Phi converts quantity adsorbed to a liquid volume, and this liquid volume is commonly accepted as the pore volume. The term texture, introduced at the beginning of this presentation, can now be appreciated. Texture refers to a combination of physical features of a solid surface whether the particle is a drill core sample or an accumulation of finely divided particles. The term refers to the solid's specific surface area, including the area of pore walls and interparticle voids, its specific pore volume and porosity, particle shape in the case of consolidated bulk grains, and the distribution of pore volume by pore size. The surface and porous textures of a solid directly influence its behavior in a number of applications. This example shows the isotherm of a catalyst having mesoporous support material which yielded a type 4 adsorption isotherm. The average pore size was about 18 nanometers in diameter. This catalyst was used in a hydro treating process at 350 degrees C. After some duration of use, a catalyst will suffer deactivation or aging. Typically, it will be removed from the reactor, characterized, regenerated, and characterized again. This slide depicts three overlaid pore volume versus pore size plots obtained from the adsorption isotherms of the fresh, spent, and regenerated catalyst. The plot of the spent catalyst indicates that deactivation occurred by a pore plugging phenomenon as evidenced by the reduced pore volume. After regeneration, 80% of the pore volume was recovered, allowing the catalyst to be used again in the reactor. It also should be noted that the thermal conditions within the reactor and during the regeneration process did not alter the effective pore size or the size distribution of the original catalyst. Here is another example on the same deactivation regeneration process. In this case, the catalyst support is different from that of the previous example. The graph clearly shows that the severe thermal conditions in the reactor have shifted the effective pore size and skewed the pore volume versus pore size distribution from that of the original catalyst, indicating that in spite of the fact that the pore volume of the spent catalyst was once again 80% recovered, the catalyst activity will have been reduced to an unacceptable